So today we are going to start with the first paper, uh, communicative English, first unit of this paper, communicative English. And we start with in the first unit you have what is communication. So we will try to understand first what is uh, communication. So communication is, uh, you know, you would have heard this uh, um, uh, uh, proverb or you may, it's a quote by Burton. A blow with a word strikes deeper than a blow with a sword. Right. So blow with the word. The words are so important for us that what words do we use during our conversation or in writing orally or in uh, in written form. So let's understand the term first. What is communication? See, first of all, from where this word has come from, it's the Latin word communis. And that means to transmit to transmit, to transfer from one to other, or what impact, as I said, blow, blow is an impact, right? So to transmit or to transfer or to impact, to change or exchange, because communication is always two way. Okay, when you say something and the response that you get or to convey, what do you transfer? What impact is, uh, what causes impact? What is exchanged? What is shared? What is conveyed? This we will discuss. But before that, communication is, for your understanding, it is imparting and exchanging of information. That is the content. And this information can be exchanged in a spoken form, in written form, or sometimes it is just gestures. Nodding your head, raising your hand through your fingers or the body language. That is also communication. Got it? Now, see, these are the different definitions by different theorist language experts, right? of communication. Language, no, sorry, communication is the sum of all the things one person does when he wants to create an understanding in the mind of another. Sum of all things, as I said, it may be spoken form, written form, or the gestures, or the body language, the total of all these things. When we do, in order to send a message to other person. To create the understanding in the mind of other. Other person may perceive. Those gestures or those words. According to his own perception, his own experiences. Right, so it's not a simple process. Sometimes we think that what we say the person means the same thing. We'll come to that. But for now, just understand that when we want to convey something to the other person, it may be any sort of information. It is either in words or in gestures or in some other form. Pictures also communicate. Right. So this is the first definition by Ellen Lee. The sub other definition that I've collected is by Gilson. Bellows, Gilson and Adran. They say a communion by words. Communion is two people speaking to each other, right? By words, letters, symbols, or messages. And as a way that one organization member shares meaning with the other. This is for business organization, government organization, or any institution in colleges, in schools, wherever you will go for your work, your workplace. So how the messages will be exchanged? How are you going to communicate with the other person? Right? Then the other definition by Hoven. He says it is verbal. It's a very short one. See, and yet it has uh, everything that you need to know about communication. The verbal interchange 
of thoughts and ideas. What are you communicating? You're communicating your emotions, thoughts, feelings, ideas, any concept that you have in your mind. So when you verbally do that, we'll come to that. See, communication is of two types, uh, verbal and non-verbal, but he's talking only about verbal communication. Then there's one more. He says, Anderson says, and this is very comprehensive one, Anderson says that communication is the process by which we understand others. Process. Now, what does this process involve? Words and gestures, everything he has included, like Hobbin is talking only about verbal communication. But here Anderson says that communication is actually a process. And process of understanding other people. And in, in turn, endeavor, endeavor means try to be understood by them. We understand others and make ourselves understood by uh, others. It is dynamic. Dynamic means ongoing. It goes on and on. And it is constantly changing and shifting in response to the total situation. See what we are, we may be using same words to the same person in different situation and that person will take different meanings of the so, uh, same words that are being spoken to, right? Is there someone else in the gallery? No, okay. So communication is a process by which we understand others and in turn try to be understood by the other people. So this is uh, the fourth definition of, I've collected many definitions so that uh, each one is talking about some aspect or some total of what the term communication means. So now here, Ellen Lewis, we have done. Just wait. Ellen Louis we have done. Then there's one George Terry. He says that communication is an exchange of facts, ideas, opinion, emotions. These are the contents that are being exchanged by two or more people. Then Peter Little. He says communication is a process by which information is transmitted between individuals and organizations so that an understanding response results. When information is transmitted, then at the receiving end, the person will give you the response that what he has understood from that. And this process is called communication. Then here, there's a, a, a by Newman and Sama. They have also said this is exchange of facts, ideas. Then uh, uh, there's one more definition that transmission of information, same things, you know, uh, by the use of, this is what is added in this definition, by the use of symbols, words, pictures, figures, music also communicates, uh, paintings, any statue, sculpture, all these things, they are the means through which communication can be carried out. Right? So basically, these all things, they become signs. Signs. So signs are transmitted. Signs are first of all produced. And then they are transmitted. So communication involves three steps. First, you select the signs, then you produce the signs. Words are signs. So words are selected or painting may be selected. Some color may uh, communicate some kind of feeling. So selection, then production and then transmission. And from this transmission, the receiver will perceive a meaning. They will be, uh, he will try to understand what you are trying to say. So he is trying to, this meaning is similar to that in the mind of the communicator. Right. Now, in Collins Dictionary, how is language defined? 
language is a communication system language is a means through which the information is communicated so language as a communication system made up of group of written or sound symbols now written and sound symbols they are used as a means of communication and uh, if it is a verbal communication then it is through language that it is communicated it is transferred right so this process of sending receiving messages either by verbal or by non verbal methods is communication if it is verbal then it is language okay so here just we have uh, uh, talked about the term communication what is the meaning of the term communication through these definitions we try to understand and uh, to simplify all these things we can simply say that communication is transfer and this transfer takes both ways so we can say that communication is exchange exchange of what exchange of information uh, thoughts exchange of some idea exchange of uh, emotions feelings so communication is exchange and how does this exchange take place it takes place either verbally in the form of words and sentences or non verbal this part we will see later but before this after understanding what is communication what are the characteristics what are the features of communication let us try to understand this when we talk about the features of communication first and most important thing is that it is unavoidable it has to be even animals communicate plants communicate right so how do plants communicate plants may communicate with sun plants communicate with soil plants communicate with water when they need these things they try to show they bend towards sunlight they bend towards water bodies right the roots they go down to the earth in search of water and minerals so that is communication they communicate for hunger right animals animals also communicate they may communicate for their hunger they may communicate for if there is some kind of threat you see the birds they start flying they start chirping in a different way so in this way in their community communication community so in their community they try to communicate that there is a threat let's fly together okay so communication is unavoidable even plants and animals they communicate we are human beings so we communicate our communication is more refined it is not just for hunger it is not just against threat but also we communicate when we want to exchange the ideas or some concepts right it is not just for information sake like this is an information that there is a threat so let's fly let's flee let's run away so that is for the security purpose for uh, uh, this uh, communication to protect against threat but here we human beings since we are more uh, advanced so we communicate for exchange of ideas as well our process of communication is not so simple so first point is that communication is unavoidable okay we uh, you know uh, communicate without using words also our body language what kind of dress we are wearing okay then uh, what kind of gestures we are giving then our hands how our hands are moving how do we sit our posture okay how near to the person we are physically when we are speaking to so all these minute details also come under communication then the second characteristic is at least two persons should be there when we are communicating 
Why? Because one person who gives the message, one who sends the message is a sender. Right? And the other is receiver. Who is the receiver? One who receives the message. Right? So communication will involve at least two people. First, sender and the other is receiver. The third characteristic of communication is exchange of ideas. There must be exchange of ideas, information. This we have talked about. Uh, then two persons should be there. One person, when he speaks, the other listens, then the other will give the feedback, his response to what he has perceived. So when this process is carried out, we can say this is also one of the characteristic of communication, that communication is a process. It goes on. It's an ongoing process. It is a dynamic process. Dynamic means it's something like living thing. It goes on, never stops. It has got its own life. Okay, all the messages, they have, they carry several meanings. So one message is not in isolation. There are so many meanings attached to it. The person who is sending message has got his own experience and the person who is receiving message has got his own experience. So what I am sending on the basis of my experience may not be understood in the same way as the other is receiving based on his because our experiences are different. Right. So sender and receiver. The process is going on between these two and the positions change when one is a sender other other time other uh, when the other person will receive and he will send the response then he will become the sender and the uh, first person will become receiver. So there has to be some kind of understanding between the two persons between the sender and receiver. On the basis of that mutual understanding, this process is carried out. Then as we have discussed in definition itself, it could be a verbal message. It could be non-verbal message. Just raising eyebrows can send the message to the person. Widening of your eyes or a smile. That is also communication. They are all non-verbal communication right so the process of communication will involve these steps characteristics we have discussed first we discussed what is the definition of communication and we got some keywords from there then we moved on to the characteristics of communication what are the features of communication and now we are trying to understand how this process is carried out what happens during conversation? What happens when we try to communicate with some other person? So the in this process, the first step is by the sender. Who is sending the message? And the message, as we said, could be a thought, idea, symbol or a picture, anything it can be. So this is the first process, the sender, the first step of this process that the sender will send the message. Right? What is the message? The second uh, thing that is being uh, sent by the messenger, um, uh, by the sender is message. And this message is information. Right? Then this information is actually encoded. Encoded means, suppose you are smile. That means let's make friends. But it is not said just it is a smile. So a smile is an encoding. It is encoded. Right? Your offer for friendship is encoded in smile. So that is encoding. Transforming the message into an appropriate medium, which may be verbal or non-verbal, depending upon the situation, space, where it is spoken, where the message is given. So time and nature of the message to be sent to the intended receiver. This is encoding. Encoding means you have sent it wrapped in a code. 
so it is now the uh, function or the duty of the receiver to decode this message right media media is this channel through which the message is transmitted right then the receiver maybe one person maybe many person they are receiving the message that means at one point we had receive uh, sender and at the other end we have the receiver he may be listening if it is spoken message that you have sent he may be viewing if you it is some kind of gesture or painting or something or reading if it's a written message so now what is his function he will decode the message that is sent by the sender decode means he will try to understand comprehend interpret the message now this is a very you know uh, delicate process because his own experience is involved in it his past is involved in it right so the receiver interprets the message and tries to understand in the best possible way when the message is interpreted when it has been decoded by the receiver then the receiver will send a message to the sender that i have received the message i have understood it in such and such way and now this is my response so what is important is that the message has to be correctly decoded by the receiver okay so this is the entire process of communication so you can just uh, draw arrows like it's a two way process there is a sender then there is a encoding process involved here after encoding the uh, there is a medium channel the receiver receives it he decodes it and gives the feedback so these are the seven steps involved in communication have you ever thought that when you speak something your mind is going through the whole this seven steps while you are answering back to any uh, message that you have received okay so these are the steps so communication is basically a complex process and we are going to uh, just we are discussing it in a very uh, preliminary way today so communication is a complex process and it involves several variables like what kind of situation if a person is angry and you speak something and uh, the person is angry the mood is angry of the receiver he will interpret the message in some other way if he is in a good mood and then you are going with a request your request may be accepted and that same request when he is in angry mood may not be accepted so situation is important okay then there is a different genre medium painting uh, music or any medium and method of delivery in what way the message is delivered that manner is important for communication to success be successful these all variables have to be thought about to be taken into consideration right in what tone you are speaking to the person uh, which are the words which you are emph emphasizing right so in what way you communicate so that you know uh, a feeling of empathy uh, clear understanding these things are evoked that is also important for successful communication we we'll come to that later what are the types of communication right it can be broadly classified into verbal and non verbal ones the verbal communication can be either spoken one or it may be in writing so verbal communication may be oral communication it may be written communication oral communication is a process whereby a speaker interacts verbally 
with one or more listeners in order to influence the latest behavior. Latest behavior, how do you influence the latest behavior? Later means receiver. Receiver, you can influence the behavior of receiver by judging that in what situation you are appearing before that person, right? What is your body language? How that medium is being carried out? So these all things you will have to take into consideration. So oral communication in a business context or a, you may say in a, a professional context can take the form of meetings, presentation, one to one meeting, then performance reviews. So that is what is oral communication. What is written communication? When the sender is writing something, he's a writer here. And verbally in a written form through words. The message is sent to the receiver. In order to influence the latest behavior. Written communication at a workplace can take several forms. You may write letter, application, resume, memos, circulars in offices, notices are sent in the offices or in schools and colleges, you're sending messages, uh, notices. So that is all written communication. You're writing report on some, say, annual function of your college or uh, uh, any event that has taken place in the college, newspaper reports. The, those journalists are doing, you're writing emails. They are all examples of written communication. Right, we will be doing it later. Then nonverbal communication. The communication where words are not used. Right, in nonverbal communication, uh, it is uh, again unintentional, unlike verbal communication. Verbal communication, when you are saying you have thought that this is something you have to say voluntarily, this is, but sometimes, you know, things happen. Just you, your movement of your hand or just uh, some change in the gesture, which was not intentional. Your mood is not good and you don't want to tell other person that you are, you are not, not in right mood. So you are using your words carefully, but your face will say some, uh, you know, movement of your eyes or some, uh, there is something that will happen that uh, through which uh, through gesture that you would communicate that this was not intended to. But then the message has gone. So all of us tend to communicate silently, unknowingly. We send signals to people, we send messages. So that is why it said that sometimes it is not necessary that what we say is, is the thing that is communicated. Your gestures, facial expressions, these are also very important. So what is the general purpose of uh, formal communication? Why do we communicate formally? We are not talking about uh, these kinds of, uh, you know, involuntary or uh, uh, informal communication. Formally in offices, in colleges, uh, what is the general purpose of formal communication? When we have to get information or when we have to give information. Or when we want something to be done or to do, we are seeking instructions from our seniors. Or we are giving suggestions when we have to make some request, request for uh, entering the room or uh, request for some kind of leave, that is request. To persuade someone that they should agree upon what we are saying. Right? Or when we want to caution, that is like uh, I give you example of threat, from as animals are also doing this, that they caution other uh, animals of the same species. So caution. We also give caution to students or students give caution to the, among the friends to clarify, appraise, evaluate, organize. So these are the different purposes, various purposes of formal communication. 